You know that I'm a huge fan of wireless headphones, and the new Link Bud in-ear headphones from Sony are just weird enough that I had to try them. But are they any good? The Link Bud is Sony's latest truly wireless earbud style headphones. Not to be confused with the costlier and more feature-packed 1000XM4 earbuds, the Link Bud is aimed at a slightly less demanding listener. Now, what makes the Link Bud undoubtedly unique is its physical design. I can't think of a single earbud that looks like the Sony. The Sony's hollow ring design is unique in that no part of the bud penetrates your ear canal. The ring shape allows for music to flow down into the ear canal while also allowing for outside noise to be heard, albeit to a lesser degree. Needless to say, these are not active noise canceling headphones, though they do a surprisingly good job balancing your music, phone calls, or video content, you know, the things you want to hear, with outside ambient noise. These are IPX4 splash or sweat proof, meaning you can wear them to the gym or out and about on a warm day. They have a reported battery life of five and a half hours on their own, though they can charge inside their included carrying case, giving you up to 17 and a half hours of playtime before needing to be properly charged using a wall outlet. An initial setup of the Link Buds is handled inside the free Sony Headphone Connect app, which is the exact same app I use to set up my reference XM4 over-the-ear active noise canceling headphones. If you are an existing Sony headphone customer, or you're familiar with the app and Sony's setup and tuning process, initializing a set of Link Buds will be second nature. If you're new to Sony headphones, getting started with a set of Link Buds will not be the same plug and play experience you may be used to from other in-ears like Apple's newest AirPods. Can I just say that I love the app? True, it can sometimes come off as a little tedious at times, but once you get through the initial setup, which includes taking pictures of your ears, yeah, yeah, I know that the app asks for ear picks. It's important to note that once you go through the initial setup procedure, you'll never have to do it again. Meaning that every time you take your Link Buds out of their case and place them in your ear, they will automatically connect or sync to whatever device you've paired them with, which in my case, was an Apple iPhone as well as a brand new M1 MacBook Pro. Now within the app, you're able to take advantage of Sony exclusive features like 360 degree reality audio, which works in conjunction with Tidal, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Spotify users can set up quick access to Spotify streaming services, as well as a host of other services, most of which have to do with adaptive sound leveling, location-based services, as well as call settings. For me, the real perk of the Sony headphone app is its ability to essentially tune them to your personal tastes using the multiband EQ and clear bass functionality. So let's talk about the Link Buds sound. Out of the box and in your ears with zero adjustment, I doubt many will be outright just blown away by the Sony sound. Now I'm not saying that the Link Buds are bad, just that they're kind of what you should expect from an earbud at this price point. Detailed, upper mid-range and treble focused with minimal bass depth or palpable impact. In sticking with the out-of-the-box settings, the Link Buds, they're not fatiguing or harsh, but they're not what I would call neutral or balanced as they definitely favor the top end of the sonic spectrum over the bottom octaves. As a result, dialogue, vocals, higher pitch sounds, they come across as very clear, but low mid bass and bass just in general is pretty unremarkable. Dynamics are good, especially up top where the Link Buds shine, though at louder volumes, it's not difficult to get the Sonys to bottom out. And I have to say, the distortion characteristics of this earbud is rather unique. First, bass will hit with a distinct kind of garbled thwack, but as bass goes, so does the treble. And with it, you're gonna experience a newfound graininess when you reach the limit of the Link Buds capability. And a great way to hear what I am talking about would be to play the cover of Heartless by Chris Allen. Now this is not a well-recorded track, at least in my opinion. And at louder volumes, it can wreak havoc on headphones, even good ones. And I'm sorry to say that under spirited listening conditions, with the Link Buds in their default settings, they went ugly early. Those of you who like to listen loud, to hard driving rock may want to consider another headphone. For the more compressed the track, the greater the possibility that you're going to be let down 
by the Link Buds. But like with a lot of Sony headphones, the Link Buds get better the more you adjust them to your liking. Inside the app, engaging or increasing Sony's clear bass functionality brings a bit of needed weight and dimension to the Link Buds. Not so much to the bass department, mind you. I'm afraid the Sony's always come across as somewhat light, but the clear bass does enrich the low mid bass and mid-range, both of which are welcome. The default setting is zero, but I actually found that increasing the boost to anywhere between plus six on up to eight resulted in a far more balanced, but still not entirely neutral sound. From there, selecting one of the app's EQ presets will continue to change the Link Buds overall character. The only way to hear each EQ setting as set by the factory would be to leave the clear bass in its stock configuration, which for me wasn't my favorite. So I created a custom curve with a bit of boost added for good measure. With my EQ curve now resembling a mild two peak mountain range with subtle rises in both the bass and mid range, I was able to get the link buds to a place where I felt they were enjoyable for a wider range of source material, sounding far more balanced as a result. I'm not gonna call them neutral, I wasn't able to really coax real weighty bass from these weird earbuds, but from about the low mid-range on up to the treble, they can and do get better. On well-recorded tracks featuring either singer-songwriters like Amos Lee or with not too bass-heavy electronica from like Royksop's Melody AM, the Link Buds were impressive given their design. If you're the type to focus on dialogue and or vocals, especially multi-part harmonies, the Link Buds are bound to impress. Listening to the ballad Hush Hush by Avril Lavigne, her backing vocals were among the clearest I've heard from a pair of in-ears. But all that said, there is still a limitation to the Link Buds' overall dynamic capability where I would classify them as being good but not great. But for those of you who don't listen loud or need an in-ear to act or sound like a closed back pair of cans, the Link Buds start to enter respectable territory when adjusted correctly. Where I found they were at their absolute best, however, was in total long-term comfort. This is an easy pair of in-ears to wear for long periods of time and maybe even forget about. They fit securely in your ear and don't really move as you go about your day. I did several long walks with our dog Katie going up and down the hills near our home and the Sonys never once fell out or gave me any indication that they were shaking loose. Additionally, I felt call quality was great, far cleaner than through my iPhone's own speaker and receiver. And this is something even the people I was speaking to noticed on the other end of the line. Those of you spending a lot of time on conference calls or Zoom meetings, you may want to check out the Link Buds, if for no other reason than for the strength of their dialogue clarity in virtually any EQ setting. Now the Link Buds are unique, but they're far from perfect. Like I've said throughout this review, if you like bass or enjoy blowing out your eardrums, these are not the headphones for you. Let me repeat that. If you like deep, rich, palpable bass, or you simply have to play music at full tilt all the time, do not spend your money on the Link Buds. Or if you do, don't complain to me when you find that they're light in the bass and distort pretty heavily at higher volumes. Now, Sony advertises five and a half hours of real world battery life with the Link Buds. And while that was plenty for me in my day-to-day -day use, comparatively, it's a little lukewarm considering what competing in-ears give you nowadays. Additionally, the gesture based controls, you know, where you tap on your temple in order to play, pause, track skip, you know, stuff like that, it doesn't really work. Okay, it works sometimes, but you have to be pretty precise with your movements and placement of taps. If you were jogging or working out, I seriously doubt you'd get it right the majority of the time. Hell, just walking around the house, I couldn't execute a simple play pause with 100% precision. Lastly, and this is more of a note about Sony than an outright critique of the Link Buds, but 360 degree reality audio just does not sound right. Sure, there's perhaps a greater sense of space, I guess, but it, it isn't the kind of space that sounds natural. Instead, it just makes every pair of headphones that I have sound like a pair of tin cans that I'm now pumping sound into. Sorry, but there's just no other way to put it. It's just not very good. As intrigued as I am by the Link Buds, when you start to compare them directly to other similarly priced earbuds like Apple's newest non-noise canceling AirPods, you start to see where and how they come up short. For starters, the latest generation of AirPods cost about the same as the Link Buds, and for your money, you're just getting a far more turnkey product in that they just work and they sound great out of the box. Now true, AirPods are more of an in-ear design, whereas Link Buds sort of hang out just outside the ear canal, but let's, let's be real. These two products are going to be cross-shopped and the AirPods are better. 
Hands down, it, it's not even a contest. For starters, you only have to play about, mm, say, a half a second of any song to realize the AirPods have bass, and I mean loads of it. They almost have too much at times, coming across as maybe even a little bass heavy or boomy compared to the Link Buds. Thankfully, you can adjust the EQ inside your phone, your tablet, or computer and curb some of the bass, but it's better to have bass and be able to turn it down versus never being able to achieve it, which is more the case with the Sonys. The AirPods resulting sound comes across as just more balanced. They also don't distort as heavily when listening at loud levels. And, and then of course, should you already be an Apple customer, they easily work with your existing Apple products without a great deal of fuss. And it's the same story when comparing Link Buds to Sennheiser's CX line of in-ears. I mean, for about half the price, the Sennheisers get an automatic recommendation for me because they're just stupid good. Plus, they feature largely the same level of customization you get with the Sony app. And I think it's kind of the same story when it comes to the Klipsch T5 II in-ear headphones, though they are active noise canceling and a bit more expensive, though that's going to depend when or where you purchase them. I haven't formulated my final thoughts on the T5s, so I don't want to make a definitive judgment, good or bad, with respect to choosing them over the Sony, but what I can say is this, like AirPods and CX in-ears from Sennheisers, the T5s have bass. So where does that leave us with the Link Buds? Well, honestly, I still really like them, but I'm not about to say that they're great, or even among the top contenders at or near their price point. What I love about them is their all-day wearability and the way they sound when speaking with someone on the phone. As far as sound goes, they can be adjusted or made to sound good, but for some listeners, I doubt there'll ever be an ideal all-rounder. If you don't like or need a lot of bass and you value clarity and detail in the upper mids and highs, then definitely check out the Link Buds. But if this doesn't sound like you, I would steer you towards potentially better solutions in Apple's latest AirPods or some in-ears from Sennheiser. So that's it. That is now my take on Sony's brand new Link Bud in-ear headphones, but I suspect Christy has a few thoughts. <laughs> I do. Okay. Uh, bear with me. I mean, I feel like it's been a million years since we've done Done this. a proper review, yeah. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna be a little bit rusty. Okay. Um, okay, I think first I wanna talk about the, the Apple AirPods oh, okay. before I get into what my thoughts about the mm -hmm. Sony link buds mm -hmm. now just just to get it out of the out of the way what do i think is better out of all the ones you've mentioned so far mm -hmm. i think the apple airpods okay. the, the, these new ones that mm -hmm. we just got hands down better out of all the ones we've mentioned mm -hmm. now the the problem for me is that i just cannot wear them that long mm -hmm. um, i think it has something to do with the fact that they are made of a rigid material yeah. and I've always had issues with that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have the same issue um, mm -hmm. or same problem. Just everybody's ear is different. So right. comfort to me is going to be a huge factor because if I can't stand to wear them, it really doesn't matter how good they are. Exactly. Um, but they are, they are, they sound, the sound uh, of the AirPods is exceptional. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with your assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, the Apple AirPods had a fuller sound, definitely deeper bass. Mm -hmm. They're really good. I mean, it, it, like you said, it only takes a handful of seconds yeah. of a track playing. Yeah. Just be like, yep, uh, we're done here. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, they're, they're, they're really good because I've mentioned them in past videos. I wanted to, throw these out there and that's the Cambridge Melon Melon it's the dumbest name I'm sorry Cambridge Melomania Touch mm. they're another pair of wireless earbuds they're they've been out for a year or so but yeah somewhere around there and I have always really liked them mm -hmm. and recommended them over most other in years that we've had yeah having a side by side comparison oh man I was like wow these these are definitely the weakest in the bunch in terms of sound. They are so comfortable though. Mm -hmm. um, so I give them points for that. Um, but the, the Sony and the AirPods are way more balanced and have better clarity. Mm -hmm. They're just night and day, night and day better. Yeah, I, I have yet to experience a pair of in-ears that just almost instantaneously 
impressed me the way the new AirPods have. Just whoa. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. So I just, I guess they make a, um, there's a pair that are a little more expensive. Yeah, AirPods. Because we talked Pros, about that. Because yeah. I was like, you know, I wish these had the, the silicon, um, the silicone like eared. Yeah. You know what are they like? Yeah, the, the, the actual ear cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that sit there and fit more comfortably. Yeah, those yeah. I tend to like like better. Yeah. Um. So, but I think they're like a hundred dollars more. Two forty nine or two seventy nine. I can't remember, but uh, maybe we'll review those and compare them to the AirPods because this is. Kind of turned into an AirPod love fest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unintentionally. <laughs> unintentionally, but yeah, they're just really good. And for the same money, unless you're super sensitive and can't have things in your ears. Um, or you need to be in them all day. Or you need to be in a headphone all day. Um, then I would get the Sony. Yeah, I would. I would. I would get Sony over AirPods. But if you're like, no, sound quality, man, AirPods. All right, guys. Well, that is now our review of the Sony Link Buds in-ear headphone. What did you guys think? Let us know. And my question of the day for you, it's pretty simple. And that is, I know we don't review a lot of headphones on this channel. So I am curious if you would like to see more headphone reviews. Specifically, would you like us to review the Apple AirPod line? Sound off. Let me know. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here in both of us. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. We're still moving in, but we're getting back into the groove. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and bearing with us. We're going to see you on the next video. Bye.